Hello, and welcome to the SolidCAM introduction series of training videos. The topic for this discussion is automatic edge deburring. Typically with automatic edge deburring cycles, you're dealing with one of two scenarios. One, where the model has sharp corners modeled in and we wanna break the edges of these, these, these walls. The other is when the chamfer is currently modeled into the model. So here you can see the chamfer has been applied to, the, to these faces and we're gonna deal with both of those scenarios here today. Let's start by talking about the sharp side first. I've taken the liberty to get the part ready to be machined up to the edge deburring cycle. If I turn on my updated stock feature, I can walk it through the series of pocketing progressions, the open end, roughing, the outside and the inside of the part, finishing the side walls and walking it down. So we're ready to apply our deburring cycle to the sharp edges. Let's turn the updated stock feature off. To activate automatic edge deburring, you're going to go to the automatic feature recognition tab and select edge deburring recognition. The workflow for edge deburring is exactly the same as it is for all tool paths within SolidCAM, geometry, tools, levels, technology, and link. Let's start by picking the geometry. When I go on and select new geometry, we have a series of filters here that can be applied depending on the scenario and the part that we're working on. In this case here, I'm gonna leave the default set. And when I'm selecting the surfaces, I can either pick individual faces or the entire part. Let's start by picking the entire part. When I pick the solid itself, it was going to identify all the sharp edges relative to this setup section. And it's gonna collect those into this tool path. I'm gonna right click on these and remove them all. If you wanted to include the holes as part of the deburring cycle, I can turn the filter off. And then when I pick the body, it will include the holes into the selection for deburring. In this case here, I don't want those holes selected, so I'm gonna unselect those and turn that filter back on. We also have the ability to pick individual faces. If I only wanted to break this top edge, I can select that face and collect that in. It will identify only that one edge. I can include other faces into that selection should I want to, but just different ways of selecting the geometry. In this case here, I wanna pick the entire solid part and machine all the sharp edges. I'm gonna collect that geometry into my tool path. From here, I'm gonna assign a tool. Let's select a 3 8 chamfer mill. I'm gonna go ahead and calculate a tool path to get something out on the screen. And let's go in and let's clean up our leads and links a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, let's make it maybe a 40 degree lead in angle with no um, distance on it and make the lead and lead out the same and recalculate. If I were to walk the tool out, what you're going to see is that it's taking into account the entire tool profile itself into that chamfer cycle. And it's collision checking the tool against the part in the model. In the levels tab, this is where we're gonna dictate a chamfer depth. So I might wanna break the edge. I'm gonna maybe put a 10,000th chamfer onto this part and hit save and calculate. When I calculate the tool path and I walk the tool out, you're gonna see that the tool is now in contact, breaking the edge of my surface, fully accounting for the geometry of the tool shape and profile itself. Now, if we were to let this play out, you're gonna notice some anomalies within the tool path. For instance, it didn't machine these levels completely, and that's because the tool profile has been, it's collision checking this against these tabs and these walls, and we're too close to those walls. We can change that safety level. So our gouge protection offset is set to 50 thousandths of an inch. I maybe can make this maybe be five thousandths of an inch and hit calculate. And I might see a toolpath that extends a little bit further as it's able to get closer to these areas, but it's still within a range that is too close for this tool. So I may have to go in with this one and select perhaps a smaller size chamfer tool. If I collect a smaller tool into this toolpath, Maybe we'll go down to a eighth inch chamfer tool and calculate. What we're gonna see is we get a tool path that cuts uniformly all around these profiles. 
So this is your safety zone. This is your comfort level. How close is too close? Okay, so you might want to give it a, a value that you're comfortable with to keep the tool away. And in this case, 60 thousandths is still too close. I might sell it, set it to 30 thousandths. And again, it's going to be all relative to your part and your tool and your comfort level that you describe. In levels, right now it's looking at the entire model. We have the ability to filter out a range. Maybe if we didn't want to maybe put a chamfer on these tabs over here, I could give it a lower range and click in that field and say, look, don't go any lower than this level here and recalculate and it will remove those segments within that toolpath as well. We'll recalculate it. In the technology tab itself, the constant cutting diameter is the portion on the end mill where you want the tool to be doing its primary cutting. Right now it's set to a constant uniform diameter. You can however change this. You can oscillate the tool up and down giving it a cutting range, uh, an effective cutting range along the length of the edge of the tool. So because I'm using an eighth inch end mill I might say well look I want, it's okay to go down to 30 thousandths with stepping down to the diameter width of 0.093. Recalculate. Now, if we were to look at this toolpath, it might look a little bit funny on cursory glance. If we go to the, to the toolpath, you'll see how it's stepping out as it's stepping around these profiles. That's because it's, it's gonna oscillate that tool up and down in, within that cutting range. So if we were to take this into simulation, that's going to solid verify. And let's slow this down a little bit and hit play. What we're going to see is it's going to be oscillating that tool, so moving it up and down along the length of that edge between those parameters to do its cutting. And what the end result will be is a very uniform chamfer across my entire part, but it's allowing me to use a more effective cutting range within the tool itself. So I'm not always wearing on the tool in the same areas at all times. A very effective tool path there if your part will allow for that. If we were to go into the toolpath parameters itself, I'll change this back to constant and we'll give it a width of where I want it to be cutting at. If we were taking multiple step cuts, how do we want to deal with this? So over here on the side, what we can do is we can give it a, a series of step downs. So if I were to give it a step down value of let's say three thousandths and hit calculate, it's going to give me multiple roughing passes along that chamfer. In this case here, we're set to one way and climb mill. If we were to bring this into simulation, what you're going to see is that it's along each pass, let's slow that down a little bit. Along each pass, it's going to be picking up and repositioning and plunging back into the material to take those additional roughing passes. You do have the ability to go in and say, well, look, I want you to zigzag this and then hit recalculate. And now it will be, take, a, take this in and do it as a climb mill in a conventional style path for its roughing of that chamfer. Again, fully collision checking the tool. Um, and again, you put in your own comfort level and safety levels for, for that, those particular passes. You can equalize that step down. So if you did have to take roughing pass, if the chamfer was big, you could you know, put in a step down value and equalize them and it will take the average of them and step them down uh, uniformly. Let's go ahead and let's put that back to zero and recalculate. You also have the ability to deal with the the external corner. So in this case here, my external corner is set to to rounded. So it's actually interpolating around that corner to give me a sharp corner. However, if you prefer sharp, we can tell it to go sharp, and it will give me a very sharp direction change in that corner. On certain types of features, however, it might be nice to have a looping feature on this, where the toolpath will extend beyond the edge, loop back around, and re-engage the material on all external corners. This might be the preferred methodology for this particular part. The other condition is where the surfaces already have the chamfers modeled in. If we were to go down to Setup 2, and go in and select automatic edge deburring. From here, I'll go in and select my geometry. Now, when I come in and I pick this face, okay, 
And if I were to try to capture this, and you'll see that nothing is selected. So if I were to come in and pick this and assign that same tool to this process, I'm not going to get a tool path here. It's unable to calculate anything because it doesn't see a sharp edge because with the settings set as the default, it's looking for sharp edges and there are no sharp edges from this setup. If I were to edit the geometry this time and picking it, let's remove that one. And from here, what I can do is I can tell it, look, on the limit angle recognition, I can give it a range. So I can say from zero to 90 degrees or from 45 to 90 degrees, and I'll select the, select the body, it will then identify the edge of the part. I'm gonna remove this. And if I were to set this to, let's say, 30 degrees to 90 degrees, it's still gonna capture it, in, it within this example because that's a 45 degree chamfer that's on there. However, if I were to say from 60 to 90 degrees and pick it, it's no longer an, a valid selection and it will not calculate the tool path. So you have a range filter. Again, I'll just say from 45 to 90 degrees off of the relative setup direction, I can collect that into my tool path, select a tool, and we'll pick that same eighth inch chamfer, set my necessary levels, in any of the technology. And again, if I were to calculate, it will then come out and chamfer it. Now, something interesting to note on the leads and links for this particular operation, it's segmenting the tool path, meaning it sees this chamfer as a continuous piece and it sees the other one as a continuous piece, which you can see is the approaches and how it's affecting that. Let's maybe clean up our leads and links a little bit. Let's set this to zero make the leads in and lead out the same and maybe a 45 degree approach. So you can still mitigate the, those corners. So right now it's set to rounded and it can't really interpolate around corner with how the model is rounded. So it's treating them all as individual segments of the tool path. If I come in here and say sharp, however, in, and recalculate, it will then give me a sharp transition move and one continuous tool path around that top edge. And then I can also assign the loop parameter to this parameter as well and give me a nice chamfer around a model that is currently already chamfered. So I brought the entire part into my secondary setup, come out and hit play on this, and we get a very nice uniform edge break all the way around the part. So regardless of the geometry and what you're dealing with, SolidCam has the ability to break the edges based on the geometric concerns. We'll do a quick compare on our part and see that we're set and ready to go. I appreciate your time in watching the video. I hope to see you again on the next one.